Yeah, we're going to move on here, and, and we have a very special guest joining us. We're going to bring bring him on here in a, in a, in a second. And um, you, you may have seen uh, the, the the stories, uh, the story in this week's uh, uh, Queen's Courier. And this this is a story we've heard a little bit bouncing around for for a little while, um, and, and that uh, that that is the the uh, what's happening to the. Uh, now we have to get used to saying it this way, the former St. Matthew's Church. I mean, and it's going to take a little while, I think, for, for both of us to get used to that because it has been uh, St. Matthew's for, for a very, very long time. A little, just a couple of little facts here about St. Matthew's. Um, it was, uh, it, it says here, St. Matthew's was organized 1900 as a mission of the Church of the Resurrection uh, in Richmond Hill to uh, uh, accommodate the growing population of the Brooklyn Manor section of Woodhaven. You know, Brooklyn Manor is that section of Woodhaven from, from Woodhaven Boulevard to Richmond Hill, uh, you know, mostly uh, um, uh, north of, uh, of Jamaica Avenue. Uh, a storefront is rented on Jamaica Avenue near 91st Street. So that's interesting. It's St. Matthew started on Jamaica Avenue uh, and becomes the, uh, becomes the mission's first home. Building uh, building lots on 96th Street are purchased from the Brooklyn Manor Construction Company on October 8, 1900, uh, for the erection of a small wooden church building. Uh, cornerstone is first laid on November 19, November 4, 1900. Um, they have the first service uh, in a in the, in the wooden church there, 1901, and uh, the first wedding in the wooden church takes place on June 19, 1901. And uh, it's described, Woodhaven is described there as a, as a uh, community in the daisy fields. How, how lovely is that? Um, and, and then it goes on, the Napier uh, family um, uh, makes some contributions to the parish hall, which, uh, which is built, built. And then it's in the 20s that they, uh, they raise funds for a new church building. And uh, uh, the, the, the new ground is broken on October 1st, 1927. Um, and, and this uh, this building is uh, is erected, um, and the stained glass is uh, is done by a man named John Tarbucks. We we had uh, we had a, a historian from England get in touch with us, who's uh, writing a book on 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 the life of this man, um, uh, John Tarbucks. He was a famous uh, man that did uh, 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 stained glass. He ended up living in New York for a while, and then ended up going down to Texas. Where he did stained glass in churches down there before he before he passed away, um, and, and St. Matthew's Church this is interesting. When I had my my relatives from Scotland here, I was taking him on a tour of Woodhaven, and one of the places we stopped, I showed him was St. Matthew's. It was closed at the time, and uh, St. Matthew's was built on land which was once the Napier farm, and the Napier farm emigrated from Glasgow, Scotland, which is where my family is from. So it was really. Uh, interesting for them to come here and, and see this. So now uh, we know what happened to uh, to St. Matthew's a couple of years ago. It closed and it has been uh, uh, empty this time. And uh, you know, recently there's been rumblings. You've all seen a lot of work going there, and and uh, and now it's it's going to be reopening. It's getting a new life, um, and it's getting a new name. It's 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 now going to be All Saints uh, Episcopal Church. Um, so, you know, we're, it's going to take a little while for us to make that, uh, to, to make that move over, but it's, it's, it's now all saints. And we're really glad to, um, to have that. And joining us, uh, right now, we're very, very pleased is the, uh, Reverend Dr. Norman Whitmire Jr., who is the rector of All Saints Episcopal Church. Um, bring on here, Reverend, how are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing very, very good. So, uh. So you guys, uh, you guys have been busy um, getting uh, uh, getting the, the building and the church and everything ready. Tell us a little bit about what uh, what kind of work has uh, been going on. Uh, it's uh, quite a bit of work. Um, it's uh, being completely renovated. Uh, when it closed two years ago, uh, it was it needed some repairs then, but of course, uh, with nothing go, no activity going on. Uh, over 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 time, uh, things really uh, start to deteriorate. So uh, it was completely, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, removed of, of uh, mold and and that sort of thing. They did uh, they did repair work, extensive repair work on 
uh, on roofs, gutters. Um, they repointed the stone, uh, so uh, the, the stonework is, has been uh, uh, up, updated. Uh, that, those were some of the initial uh, changes. Uh, more recently, uh, as uh, people may have noticed uh, passing by, uh, we're, we're making some other, mod uh, other uh, updates. Um, the, the chancel area uh, has been updated. Uh, I just got a new floor uh, in the past week that uh, mm -hmm. was just uh, stained. Uh, it also, uh, there's been some update to the lighting. Uh, the electrical work, which was uh, most of which was the original electrical work, uh, has been updated to modern day standards. Uh, so there's there's a lot uh, a lot a lot going on. Uh, in addition to uh, some ou outside stuff uh, that uh, people may have seen, uh, say sidewalk, a uh, brand new sidewalk. Uh, we've also uh, the entrance by the bell tower. We've actually had regraded, and so it's now a handicapped entrance. There's no longer a step, so you can enter the church. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, without a step. Uh, so a, a lot of uh, exciting uh, things are being done just to, uh, to, to make it more accessible uh, to people uh, when uh, when we do open up. That, that's excellent. So now, when uh, when is your opening? Uh, your your opening. What's what are your plans? The uh, the consecration of the church uh, will be held on Friday, October twenty fifth at seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, it would be the Bishop of the Diocese of Long Island will be uh, presiding over that service. Uh, so it will be the, the consecration of the church because when it closed two years ago, it was deconsecrated. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it will be, it'll, it'll be, it will be consecrated uh, under the name, the new name, uh, All Saints Episcopal Church, and I will be officially installed as the rector. Ah, okay, very good. So, and uh, so now uh, I know in the past when uh, when they deconsecrated it, uh, they had uh, uh, around the back they had a columbarium with uh, some of the remains of, of, of uh, you know uh, parishioners in the past. Uh, is that something? Mm -hmm. as, is that still a feature that uh, that All Saints is going to uh, ca carry on? Is that uh, is that still there? Uh, yes, uh, the the space is still there. Um, we are going to have a going to have uh, a columbarium in that same space. Uh, we'll be bringing uh, our our columbarium from our existing uh, location uh, and placing it in the in that uh, small room. Uh, and then we'll be doing something uh, to to update. We're, what we're hoping to do is to to get uh, matching covers uh, for the columbarium that uh, that match uh, our covers and, and put it in the space mm -hmm. in the niches that are uh, currently available. There are about 90 niches uh, in that are already in in the building, and then we're bringing uh, we're bringing uh, a number of our own uh, as well. So there will okay. be quite a bit of yes. All right. So now now coming into uh, you know coming into a, a community, uh, and listen, even th these days uh, we we've seen a number of uh, a number of churches uh, face different challenges. Uh, I myself, I live next door to a church that uh, recently closed and is being converted into a daycare center. Um, so we're very, very uh, happy, you know, after to see a to see a church that was closed to to, to reclaim it, to get it, to have it come back to life. Um, but what challenges do you see uh, your your church facing now, coming into a new community, and and, and how do you how do you plan to to reach out uh, and 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 uh, uh, and find find new parishioners. That's a great uh, great question. Um, uh, th that's uh, one of the the main reason we're we're moving is actually so that uh, we can be a, a presence, a uh, visible presence in the community. Uh, and uh, the both the congregation and the diocese have recognized that uh, that Woodhaven is a community that that uh, has a lot of potential. Uh, for growth, we have a lot of potential for growth uh, and ministry uh, in the community, and we think the community could uh, benefit from those uh, those those ministries. So um, uh, that's that's very exciting uh, for us. Uh, there are a number of ways that we uh, plan to reach out. Uh, first and foremost, uh, as we are a church, uh, we uh, will be uh, offering a variety of uh, worship services. Uh, both on Sundays and during the week, 
uh, so that um, there are uh, many opportunities for uh, for prayer uh, and meditation and worship uh, in our space. Uh, so that would take the form of, of course, masses on Sunday, uh, but but also a few masses during the week uh, as well. Uh, my my own first, uh, ideally, I would love to see uh, mass every day, um, but mm-hmm. that may take a few years to to get up to that point, depending on our our staffing uh, our, our uh, staffing options. Uh, but it, it, I want it to be a place where where people from the community can come and and find uh, you know find a spiritual home uh, and and be very comfortable there and, and very welcome uh, there. So uh, we want to create a welcoming atmosphere uh, for for people. Uh, along uh, and and then in addition to that, we have a number of ministries uh, that uh, we hope to continue uh, that. Uh, uh, that will um, that will happen uh, in our church as well. Uh, one of the things, that we, one of the big things we do is, uh, is a senior lunch program once a week, once a month. I'm sorry, uh, the third Saturday of the month. Uh, yeah, it's been very uh, well received in the Richmond Hill community, and we tend to continue that uh, at our facility as well. Um, and um, so, uh, one of the other things I forgot, I didn't mention uh, earlier in the renovations, we're going to be renovating the parish renovating the parish house as well uh, with mm-hmm. some uh, office, office space and, and uh, hall space, parish hall space. And so uh, we'll be doing some uh, uh, events uh, such as that. Um, and, and also, as, as we get to know the community, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be offering other uh, services and outreach uh, programs uh, for, um, for the uh, members of the, of the community uh, as we sort of get a sense of what the needs are uh, around the community, which is very exciting. Uh, and one other thing I'd like to mention is um, we recognize uh, that there is uh, a significant uh, number of uh, persons in, the, in Woodhaven uh, who, uh, whose uh, primary language is Spanish. And so that's uh, one of the other uh, things we plan to do is offer some uh, uh, number of services in Spanish as well. Very good, very very good. Well, it's it's, it's exciting to see, and, and you know, in, in addition to this, you know, in, in the conversations, you know, that I've that I've had with you so far, um, you know, one of the things that has has interested me as a, as a lifelong resident of Woodhaven, and, and as uh, as a member of the the historical society, is uh, is your views on on the uh, Wyckoff uh, Schneider uh, Family Cemetery. Um, now this is this is you know for many people this cemetery has been a secret. You know, it's not it's not been a um, it's not been something that a lot of people uh, know about. In fact, uh, every so often on Facebook when someone will post an article about it or something, a lot of people said I never knew it was there. And you know going back uh, you know a couple of centuries, th- these are two uh, families that were uh, very prominent in the area. Wyckoff. Uh, Obviously, that's a, that's a name many people are familiar with. Uh, Schnedeker, that that family, a lot of people might not uh, be familiar with the name because it's, it's kind of been lost over the years, but um, they owned a number of hotels, uh, uh, including a, an especially large uh, hotel that sits right on the property where Frank and Kay Lane sits right now. And um, a lot of members, the early settlers, of, of this area uh, were, were buried in that in that cemetery, and that cemetery has had sort of a, 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 a has had a, a dramatic history <laughs> in Woodhaven. A few times it has fallen into disrepair. Um, so can you tell us a little bit how you view that cemetery and, and, and your plans for it? Uh, sure. Uh, that is, uh, you know, we're we're uh, it's a wonderful gift that we're we're. Uh, that comes with the, with the church that as part of the, the church's uh, uh, that to have the cemetery, uh, this historic cemetery, uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, uh, we we intend to uh, to do uh, what we can to restore uh, some of the uh, to restore the cemetery and to um, and to make it bring it to a place where uh, people can visit it. Um, and and it can uh, uh, there can be some it can be uh, something that uh, people will know about. Uh, uh, so far, uh, so far, what's been done is uh, we've uh, it has been recently uh, cleaned up, 
uh, uh, a lot of the overgrown brush has been removed, and uh, there's still a little more that uh, yet to be done that uh, will be removed uh, hopefully in the next few weeks. Uh, but uh, going forward, um, I really uh, would love to see it uh, restored. Uh, you know, a lot of I walked through there uh, uh, last week, or the last couple of weeks I've been walking through there and noticed that many of the gravestones are broken. Uh, some of them you can't even uh, read what's on them anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. so it would be nice to uh, restore those uh, back so that they could be, um, you know, they're, uh, they could honor um, those persons that they're, they were intended for uh, honoring. Uh, but I'd also, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, space that's not, that's not burial ground, really, um, which uh, I think could be, would be a wonderful place uh, to, to serve as like a, a place for meditation and relaxation and, um, and mm-hmm. rest and quiet. Uh, and so that's uh, one of the things that I'd like to do with the, that we'd like to do with the space is to, uh, to, to devote some of it to, um, to prayer and meditation. Um, if you've got enough room, I'd love to see a labyrinth uh, there, uh, which is uh, a, a, a spiritual device that, that many churches have uh, 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 to, uh, to allow and facilitate um, uh, the private, private prayers. Um, and I'd like it to be a place uh, where the community can go in um, and, uh, and, and see it, view it, tour it. Um, I know that uh, in the past, uh, tours were given of, uh, of, the, uh, mm-hmm. of, the, of the space periodically, uh, and so I'd like to, to continue that or uh, bring, bring that back, uh, resume those. Um, and I'm hoping that since there's been uh, such a great amount of commu- community interest uh, and its historical significance, um, I'd like to uh, enlist, the, uh, enlist the help of the community uh, to, to build on that interest, uh, enlist the help of the community, uh, and perhaps some of the members of the families uh, whose, whose uh, relatives are buried there um, as, a, as a way of uh, getting uh, resor- resources, both, both monetary and, and person power, uh, to, awesome. to help build a, build, rebuild the, the cemetery and maintain it. As well, so I think it could be a, a really nice uh, community space. Yeah, I, I think so, and that's what I'm. I, I've been really excited about is that that you know you're, you're coming in and you're seeing it as a as a potential asset uh, instead of uh, instead of a liability, instead of you know a, a problem. Uh, you're seeing uh, you're seeing an opportunity here, and that's uh, and that's exciting. Um, now, when we spoke the other day, I told you about a newspaper article I had. And uh, uh-huh. I, I went. I went. And I found it. I, I dug it out here, and it's actually a very. It's a very long piece um, about Woodhaven. It was published in uh, the New York Herald Tribune, uh, April fifth, nineteen sixty four. So, and it's really it's a it's a ratty piece of paper. It's falling apart. I'm going to have to get this scanned uh, soon. Uh, it's very difficult to scan because it's so large. But in this uh, in this article, uh, there is a, a small section in which it talks about uh, it talks about the cemetery, and um, and in it, which it was, this is something that is really interesting to me because it, it you know when you're looking back at old newspapers, that's when you get some really interesting information because you're collecting information based on memories for people who were alive who, who, who stretched back many years, and they speak to a man here called Al Ball, who was in his 80s at the time, so he stretches back to the uh, 1880s, and he was the, uh, the founder and editor of the Leader Observer, so it's a newspaper that's been around here for over 100 years. And uh, it says here, you know, he recalls a Napier family burial, uh, some half a dozen years ago. So now, you know, I'm saying is this is 1964, half a dozen years ago, you know, puts that sometime in the 50s, 1950s, a, a Napier family burial in there, which is far later than, than any other estimates of a, uh, a burial or any records of any burial that, that, that I'm aware of uh, yeah. of anyone in there. Because uh, apparent, you know, the uh, the uh, other uh, historic records uh, indicate that the last the burial ended sometime in the, at the end of the 1900, uh, end of the 1800s, end of the 19th yeah. century. Um, I, 
say it was, I want to say 1890, 1897-ish, um, uh, could be a little earlier, but, uh, yeah, so that would be surprising because, uh, supposedly there were no, there have been no more burials since, since the end of the 19th century. Yeah, and, and actually so I, the way it's worded here too, it, not only that, it says, um, uh, he says, uh, he recalled the Napier family burial in the 96th Street Cemetery a half dozen years ago, but there have been few others in a half century. So he says there's only been a few others, but that still doesn't mean there have been more that we may not be aware of. Now, granted, yeah, his memory could have been faulty or he could have just been joking, but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to reach back across the years. Yeah. Given his age, he probably, I mean, he would have been around when it was still in use. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, so, so it's that's uh, interesting. That's of interest there. As a matter of fact, uh, it does mention in here uh, at, at, at one place that uh, that the leader observer had uh, had called for for its uh, cleaning up um, because it had fallen into disrepair back in the 30s. Uh, so I'm trying to track down an article on that, which would be which oh, would be interesting. those would be great to see. Uh, I would love to. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting in here is it's, it's, this is from the same gentleman. It says, um, uh, in a teeming Woodhaven uh, on a busy Jamaica Avenue where each inch has value, the lane to the cemetery should uh, eventually yield to the demands of business and progress. But Al Ball said that is not so. Again, from the same gentleman. It says, the alley, the alley beside the Willard has, quote, right of way in perpetuity. So those who revere their predecessors will always be able to get into the cemetery. So uh, that's something you know. Again, we'll have to uh, we'll have to do some research yeah, I, on. Yeah, I so. would uh, actually. Uh, one of the things I'd be interested in uh, investigating is exactly that I, the access, uh, because mm -hmm. uh, the you know I, I understand that that there's a, there's that alleyway. I've walked up it actually, uh, uh -huh. but uh, you get to a point and you can't actually access the cemetery. Uh, and so it would be. It would be. Uh, I'd like to find out, you know, if, if there's any possibility of, of reopening that access, uh, that, because that would be one of the ways that the that the community could could access it. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is, is through that. Um, otherwise, it would have to. It would have to be something uh, arranged through the church, which I think that's what's been. That's what was done in the mo more recent past uh, in terms of sure. uh, seeing it. Um, you know, which, you know, if that's if that's the option we have, that's certainly uh, you know we can certainly do that. But it would be interesting to you know to see if we can we can open that access up. Excellent. Well, listen, I want to I want to thank you uh, uh, so much for calling. It's been very very interesting, and we'll uh, we will we will see you on 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 the twenty fifth and beyond, and we oh, look please. forward to uh, seeing what you have uh, coming out. And we uh, and and you know. Congratulations, and you know a big, very big welcome to Woodhaven. Thank you. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, we're all excited about the, uh, you know, uh, coming to this uh, new vibrant community, and uh, uh, I hope I hope people will come check us out. Um, and and I tell you, the 25th is going to be a big, a huge, a huge deal. Uh, you know, to, of the reopening. It's a big service, and then just a couple weeks after that. Is our is our major feast day, uh, All Saints, and so we're gonna have you know another big service. We got two big celebrations coming. Uh, that'll be on the third of uh, of November, uh, Sunday. Uh, so we got two big things coming up. We hope people will check us out uh, and come visit us, and uh, hopefully they'll like what they see and they uh, might stick around. Terrific. Well, listen once again. Good luck, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for calling. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. You have a great evening. All right, brother. Take care. Bye. Bye. And that is Reverend Dr. Norman Whitnier, Jr. He's a rector. Uh, he will be installed as a rector on October 25th of, of All Saints Episcopal Church. And uh, really, really, really interesting, you know, uh, to hear what's going on there. And uh, it's, uh, it's such a it's such a pleasure. Again, because, you know, every, every uh, you know, time you look up, um, you you worry that you're going to see another another church lost. I mean, we lost this church uh, here on 91st Street, um, and you know that church. Let's face it, that church had been sort of lost a number of years before, 
and uh, you know had had become what we had uh, termed you know a rent a church because they were renting they were renting out and there was no permanence there was no real connection to the community um, and you know eventually it it, it it failed and it was heartbreaking to to see when uh, uh, you know St Matt's uh, closed uh, closed its doors, and to see it sitting there uh, empty, and um, you know, it's 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 wonderful to see uh, to see this uh, to see this coming about.